Right, it's uh, Darren Sabeda again, Bay Area News Group, Mercury News, East Bay Times, here with Mike Lefkow, Joseph Dykus. Guys, we've reached the finish line. Week 16. Can you believe it? Gone are, by we the are we happy? Are we, uh, Lefty, you always get sad when the season ends because you love football so much, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I really enjoy doing football. And, of course, I enjoy baseball, too. So I, I'll wait for baseball. And, yeah, I'll be keeping an eye on on hoops. Well, we're going into hoops, and Joseph's going to be helping us out with some soccer. So uh, we've got a little bit coming up here after the um, after the football season ends, and we get our all area football team out. And uh, speaking of which, uh, coaches or athletic directors or whomever is listening uh, listens to our weekly podcast here, please send your all league teams or you know candidates for our all Bay Area news group team uh we'd love to get your input if you have any um so please send it to uh high schools at bayarianewsgroup.com that's again high schools all one word at bayarianewsgroup.com uh but 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 uh before we get to the uh all area football team which is an, another week or so before we start really diving into that um we got some football left we do. Seven teams from our coverage area will be playing for state championships this weekend, including five in the upper divisions. All five upper division slots this season are filled by Bay Area teams. Mike Lefkow, what do you think when you see San Ramon Valley, McClymans, Pittsburgh, De La Salle, and Sarah all representing the Bay Area in the upper divisions? at uh, the state championships. Well, it's a good year for the Bay Area. I um, kind of didn't think all, all Bay Area schools would fill all five slots. I thought uh, San Joaquin would get one or two. Um, but um, uh, Bay Area schools, I mean, uh, and, and it's really, it's North Coast, Central Coast, and the Oakland section are all represented in that group too. So. They all had their – there were some – the the elite teams, the top level, were all pretty good. Very impressive. Uh, Joseph, you've covered a number of these teams this year. Uh, has it been pretty cool coming in cold to see these teams um, make the march all the way to week 16 and make it into a state final? It has. Um, I was going to say that up until about 20 seconds to go in the game, I didn't think San Ramon Valley was going to be headed to a, to a state championship, so it's cool to see them in there. Um, yeah, and like Levy said, we've got teams from all over the Bay Area. It's not like it's just East Bay teams or it's just South Bay teams they're making in. Um, I am uh, I'm interested in seeing what, what the rest of California can uh, can bring because you know you read you look at Max Prep and you look at maybe Huddle highlights, but it's nothing like watching the watching the teams in person. Oh, they'll bring it. Southern California will bring it. Um... And we've got some good matchups. Um, what are you, uh, Mike Lefkow, what are you most looking forward to uh, on state championship weekend? What am I looking most? Well, yeah. I think for me, um, there are two games that really stand out. Pittsburgh and Liberty, because it is Vic Galley's last game. And, you know, I've covered many Pittsburgh games with Vic Galley. He's a, he's a good coach. He's a class person. And, um, I mean, I've known him for a long time. I even knew his uncle, George Galley, who uh, coached football and wrestling in the East Bay. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll be looking at that one. And then um, the other one really intrigues me is to see how Sarah can do against St. John Bosco. Um, I saw the Cal Preps prediction, and I'm hopeful that Sarah can at least make it a closer game than that. I don't want to see a running clock in that game. Joseph, and what do you mean, I'm rooting for Sarah. I don't, you know, I don't care who knows it. I hope Sarah wins. There you go. Joseph, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking – I mean, I've covered so many of their games at this point. I'm looking forward to seeing how uh, Mac does against the other modern day from uh, Chula Vista. Modern day Catholic. Right. I mean uh, – Winners of 10 in a row. That team started 0-4. Yeah, no, that was crazy how they went on this run and – uh it's interesting because I mean, you, me and you talked off uh, camera about how McClymans, they've won all these state titles, but all of their titles have come playing at McClymans. 
or in Oakland. Yeah, Laney College, I think most of them, right, Lefty? Yeah. Some of them? Yeah. And then the but one in the one time they went to SoCal, they, they got beat, I think, by 30 points. And, of course, like Lefty, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how Sarah does against St. John Bosco. Uh, I've heard so much about them that mm -hmm. I want to see. Are, do they live up to the hype? Well, I mean, uh, according to, to our friends at Scorebook Live, Mitch Stevens and, and company, um, St. John Bosco has 30, 34 players on his roster with scholarship offers. Mm. 34. Lefty, that's a lot, right? <laughs> well, I mean, and I said this before, and I'll say it again. I mean, I think St. John Bosco, modern day, and I don't know, maybe one or two other schools down there probably have more talent than any school in the Mountain West Conference. It's not refined talent, but it's it's really elite talent. And, I mean, I don't know, do they have more talent than, say, some of the lower-end Pac-12 or Big Ten schools? I don't know, but these schools are tremendously talented. Well, I, I'm I'm looking forward to Vic Galley's last game. I'm glad I'm going to be there. May even write a column, Joseph. Might write a column on Vic Galley and and his experience down there because uh, it is really cool uh, yeah. that uh, his last game at Pirate Stadium on Saturday night in the rain was a victory to send. Uh, his team to a state championship game, and he's going to get an opportunity to not only avenge the loss to Liberty last season when Jaden Rashada was uh, was coming off a hamstring injury and playing basically on one leg, and and Pittsburgh just got completely outclassed in that game. They they weren't ready, and they got blown out thirty five to seven. But not only that game, he's also got that game that you covered, Mike Lefkow at the state championships and I talked to Vic about it and I'm going to write about it in our advance. That game stings. They were up 21 to nothing in that state championship game in that on that windy night, day, night, whatever in Sacramento at Hornet Stadium at Sac State and they lost to Narbonne. A few problems after that game. Yeah, I mean they were they were a good team. Their best player was at running back who wound up at Oregon State. But right. um, they were a good team, but yeah, Pittsburgh just, I don't know what happened at halftime there. It was like watching two different teams. And I remember talking to Jacob Bandas after the game and, and he was not happy. And he said some things that he might've regretted saying later, but. Um, he was a star line star player for Pittsburgh that season lineman. Right. Right. He's now at the university of Washington and um, he's a good player, but uh, he was very unhappy after that game. And, and uh I mean, like I say, it was like watching two different teams, Pittsburgh in the first half, Pittsburgh in the second half. Yeah. So I'm obviously looking forward to that game. I'm also looking forward to the game on Friday night that I will be covering. Uh, De La Salle will be playing Lincoln of San Diego, and Lincoln of San Diego features a running back who I believe initially committed to UCLA, and he has flipped to Georgia. Mm -hmm. And as Justin Ball Allenbaugh says, Georgia does not recruit bad football players. So, <laughs> no. so this running back, and I'm looking at his size here, 6'2", 230. Uh, he scored four touchdowns last week in the uh, SoCal championship game against uh, Sierra Canyon Chatsworth. Uh, yeah, uh, Roderick Robinson. Remember yeah, that? You know, we can, we can see a few other good running backs come out of that school. Like, right. I'm sure we all remember right. Marcus Allen, Terrell Davis. So. But the, the De La Salle Spartans will be making their 15th state championship appearance. There's only been 16 years yeah. of state championship football in California, and De La Salle has been to now its 15th state championship game, and they are seeking their eighth state championship. Um, pretty impressive, right, Mike? Oh, yeah. I mean uh... – I don't think uh, modern day in St. John Bosco can beat that. So I mean, you go you go to the open division record book and you just see De La Salle, De La Salle, De La Salle in wins. You know, uh, and even after Justin Allenbaugh took over the program in 2013, they still won two more after he took over. And um, but their last one was in 2015. So uh, they've gone. Uh, this will be seven. This is the seventh year uh, since um, since their last state title. 
Uh, and like you, Mike, I'm also looking forward to seeing uh, how Patrick Walsh's Sarah Padres do against St. John Bosco. Um, obviously, clearly uh, a, an enormous underdog, just like anybody else would be in Northern California. De La Salle has been there since that 2015 state championship when everything changed in the state and, and Bosco and modern day took their level way beyond anybody's wildest imaginations. Um, De La Salle struggled in those open division games uh, that they played in against those teams. So this has been a great, I, I, I wrote about it. Um, you, you'll, you'll read about it in, in our content this week, uh, no matter what happens on, Saturday night for Sarah, win, lose, or whatever. You can't take away from the season that they've had, 13-0, and wins on the road over Folsom and De La Salle, uh, undefeated run through the West Catholic Athletic League, dominating performance in the CCS playoffs. I mean, the, they were pushed by one of the stories of the season, the Midi Monarchs in the right. state, in the CCS championship game, and – uh, tied seven seven at halftime. Sarah responded like a championship team and and went on to win um, convincingly. So nothing that uh, will happen on Saturday night, in my opinion, will take away from what Sarah and Patrick Walsh um, have done this season. It's just been a truly incredible um, and an incredible run uh, by uh, by that program, that team, and uh, those players. So. Um, do you guys agree, or what? What are your oh, guys saying, Sarah? Agree, and I was talking to not Sarah coach, but it was another coach. Um, pretty much game, but it was it was during. I want to say it was a was it a Clean Valley coach where he was like, you know, back in the day, once we lost in the once you lost in the playoffs or once sections were over, um, that was it, right? There was no state championship. There was no even NorCal championship. So. He was like, anything after a certain point is just kind of a bonus for a team. So I don't think, regardless of what happens uh, to Sarah in this Open Division Championship, I don't think that should affect whatever legacy this team has because, I mean, they they dominated uh, they dominated uh, CCS like few teams have. Right. Um, I lost you guys there for a minute. Are we all back? We are. Well, I see you. We're oh, there you back. Go. You're yeah, back. You're there. there we go. Uh, hopefully the recording is still going. It is. Fingers yeah. crossed, everybody. Um, yeah. So uh, anything in the lower divisions you guys want to discuss before we move on to the picks? I mean, Steve Pappen's Steve. Santa Teresa Saints are a great story. Yeah. Uh, Jalal Beachman's uh, Bellarmine Bells coming from where they were, I believe, at three and six at one point, and, and Ben Foff, uh, uh gutting it out down the stretch. And I think he's finally pretty close to healthy, I would think, as healthy as you can be at this stage in the season. Obviously had a big game against Vanden Fairfield last week. He's the running back for the Bells. So um, those two teams are have been great stories. Uh, you guys have anything else to add? Yeah, I was going to say, Santa, both, both of these teams for uh, Classical Academy and Santa Teresa, they're both the uh, Cinderella stories. I was looking at Classical Academy's record the last few years. They went 1-14 and 14 combined between the spring season and the uh, and the fall season in 2021, and now they're playing for a, for a state championship. So, um, good story for both teams. Academy is a team that Santa Teresa's playing. Uh, Mike Lefkow, do you have anything else to add? Well, I think the one thing I was going to add, just uh, kind of a by by the way, uh, the team that Menlo would have played had they beaten San Marin, uh, San Marin uh, Granada Hills Charter, they have not completed a single pass all season. They're the first team in California state history that has gone to a state championship without completing a pass. They're 0 for 7. And what makes it ironic is their most famous football alum is John Elway. So. <laughs> Who was a pretty good passer in his day? Could you imagine if, like, Sarah didn't complete a pass this season? Tom Brady's school. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, yeah. Wow. That's funny. So, hey, let's get to the picks. We got seven games to go. We're uh, seven games to pick. Um, we'll start off with the six double A game that uh, Joseph was just talking about. Classical Academy uh, from Escondido. They're going to be making the trip up to San Jose to play the Santa Teresa Saints and Steve Pappen's team 
at nine and five, five wins in a row for Santa Teresa, uh, four wins in a row for Classical Academy. Uh, I'm gonna let you go first, Mike Lefkow. Who you taking? Well, I don't think it's gonna be a classical day for uh, the team down there. I'm picking uh, Santa Teresa. Uh, I'm taking Santa Teresa too. Uh, Joseph Dykus, who you got? Let's make it a sweep, Santa Teresa. Santa Teresa and Cal Preps has also taken Santa Teresa 21-14. In the 3A game uh, at San Jose City College on Saturday night, it will be uh, Laguna Hills at 14-1, uh, and one, uh, making the trip up here to play the Bellarmine Bells at 8-6. and six. Um, Bellarmine's record, yes, 8-6, and six, but mm – -hmm. They've played a very, very tough schedule. I mean, um, not many teams at the 3A level uh, have played the, uh, the team that will be representing, uh, you know, one of the regions in the Open Division State Championship game. And so Bellarmine's schedule obviously includes Sarah, which is in Bellarmine's league, and St. Francis and Mitty, McClyman's, mm. and, and so forth. So, um, and Bellarmine's slide was, uh, was when Ben Foff, their – their top player, their running back, uh, was injured with a high ankle sprain. He's back now. Um, I got Bellerman winning this game. I'll let you go next. Mike Lefkow, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Bells. I was checking the Goonie Hill schedule, and uh, it doesn't quite match what Bellerman played this year. <laughs> wow. Joseph? I agree. And, yeah, I was looking at even the team that uh, Laguna Hills played in the playoffs, they just barely squeaked, squeaked by those teams. So I think Bellerman's going to win. You, you take Bellarmine to win on its home field of San Jose mm -hmm. City College. Uh, the rest of the games are down in Mission Viejo. Uh, yep. The 2A game, Saturday, high noon, San Ramon Valley, 12-2, and two, going up against uh, Granite Hills? Granite Hills mm -hmm. at 12-2, and two, team from El Cajon. Um, San Ramon Valley has won eight in a row. Um, the Wolves with Luke Baker, the mm -hmm. kicker. He's special, right? Austin Shelton. Mm -hmm. That to me is the, that that was the play, of the, play of the week, what he did. Yeah. yeah. Field goal on that rain and wind and a game winning field goal, that kind of pressure. Wow. 37 yard field goal to send the Wolves past Marin Catholic and into, yeah, that was, that was the, just awesome. into the state championship this weekend. Uh, Joseph, I'm going to let you go first. Who you got? You know what? Um, Luke Baker told me that he was going to be able to eat his lucky sandwich that he has apparently eaten every single week since they lost to Clayton Valley Charter eight weeks ago. So with that knowledge in hand, I have to say that San Ramon Valley has to win this game, right? Uh, true. And uh, and I was very impressed with, uh, with the – the sandwich that he eats uh honey uh what was it maple turkey, mustard, which turkey. Is my favorite on honey mustard which is my favorite dutch crunch i could i i prefer a sweet roll but if it's dutch crunch i am not going to turn it turn it down uh right. so very strong luke baker um and uh enjoy your lucky sandwich on your bus ride to mission viejo i also had the wolves win in this game uh mike lefkow who you got I'm going to be contrary. I mean, Granite Hills is – that is a great football history there. Two of their finest players, and I'm sure most people know, are one, uh, Joe Roth, the former Cal quarterback who died mm -hmm. of cancer very young. He went there, and so did uh, touchdown Tommy Vardell. Ooh. So they've had a great football history. I'm going to go with Granite Hills in this one. I'm uh, going to go with the home team on that one. All right. Cal Preps has taken Granite Hills 2, 34-28. I, I forgot to mention that Cal Preps has also taken Bellarmine 31-21 and Santa Teresa 21-14. Um, fourth game on the list, the two AA game, 4 o'clock Friday uh, at Saddleback College of Mission Viejo where McClymans at 12-1 will be taking on Modern Day Catholic of Chula Vista. 10-4, uh, but 10-0 in their last 10 games. Um, and – I looked at some of their losses. They lost to Lincoln of San Diego, which playing De La Salle. Yeah, they, they lost to the Cathedral Catholic of San Diego, which won uh, Division One AA last year and um, played De La Salle to an eight-point game this season. 
So this is not a it's not a bad team that uh, McClellan is going to be playing. Uh, I'll go first. I and like Mike Lefko in the previous game, I'm going to go with the Southern California team in this one. Um, we'll see if it comes back to bite me like it did last week when I took Lamora over McClyman's. Uh, I'm taking Mater Day Catholic to get it done and to win the two AA title. Joseph, I'll let you go next. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 be a, I'm gonna be a complete homer here. I'll go with McClyman's. Um and they have I mean Javion Thomas, I've seen him play like five times now. Does not matter who he plays, he will run for two hundred yards and three touchdowns. All right. Um, now, will that be enough for McClyman's to beat Mario de Chula Vista? Who knows? But I'm going to go with McClyman's. Mike Lefkow. Yeah, I'm going to go with Mac. I think that they'll go down there having learned some lessons the last time they played down there. And, and um, you know, the modern day Chula Vista has been very good with 10 wins in a row and has beaten some good teams. But I just think McClyman's might be a little bit better this year. All right. Uh, next game on the list, Vic Galley's last game. Pittsburgh on Saturday, 4 o'clock, Saddleback College will be taking on Liberty of Bakersfield, 12-2. and two. Uh, Liberty is back in the uh, 1A state final. After last year playing in the North, they beat Pittsburgh 35-7 and then went down and lost to Sarah of Gardenia in a very tight, tense game. In the state championship, um, obviously we know the storylines for Pittsburgh. We addressed them earlier. They lost to Liberty. They lost their last, their only state final appearance was four years ago, I think, uh, when they had a twenty-one point lead, twenty-one nothing, and lost twenty-four twenty-one to Narbonne. Um, I just can after watching Pittsburgh handle Manteca. Um, and seeing Vic Galley up in the air, I cannot see the Pirates uh, going down there and laying an egg in Vic Galley's last game. I'm taking Pittsburgh to win this game. I'll let you go next, Mike Lefkow. Yeah, I agree with you. I think uh, I think th they're going to be very emotional, very uh, fired up for this game. I think that the one thing is that they have to make sure that they – stay within themselves, they stay disciplined, they don't let things get out of hand and just let their talent take over, and I think Pittsburgh will win. The one thing that, uh, and I add, the one thing that will work against Pittsburgh, and they did make the trip down to uh, to the Honor Bowl down in the San Diego area this year and learn, you know, they they learned from their, their game against Liberty last year. It was an overnight trip, and things did not go well on that, uh, you know, the guys, you know, stayed up past curfew and things like that. So uh, they just were not ready to play that game. And they learned quite a bit from that. The one thing working against Pittsburgh in this one is um, Liberty has been in that stadium. They played in that stadium last year and uh, they lost a heartbreaker to Sarah Gardenia in the state championship. So they are going to be extra motivated to, should be a terrific game, um, but I'm, I'm still sticking with Pittsburgh. Joseph, I'll let you go next. You know, we, we've been watching the World Cup <clears throat> for the last few weeks, and all of these different teams have storylines, right? And they all have want to have their storybook ending, and only one team can have that uh, storybook ending. So it's really cool to see Pittsburgh in high school football. They have a chance to actually to do it. So I've got to pick Pittsburgh, right? They're, I think they're gonna they're gonna do it for Vic. All right, we're all going Pittsburgh, and uh, Cal Preps is not going Pittsburgh. Cal Preps has uh, Liberty 24 and Pittsburgh 21. I forgot to say in the last game, Cal Preps has Modern Day Chula Vista winning 35-28 third. Uh, child uh, for the Allen Balls, congratulations to them. Um, Coach Allen Ball now has got to get his team ready for a big game. One double A championship against Lincoln of San Diego. And as we mentioned, Roderick Robinson, the Georgia bound running back, um, 6'2, 230, has rushed for about a couple thousand yards this season. It's going to be a tough, uh, uh, a tough task for the Spartans. Mike Lefkow, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Who you got, Lincoln San Diego or De La Salle? I'm going to go with the Spartans. Um, they're just playing really well right now. And when Dale South gets on a roll like this, I 
you know, talent wise, I'm sure Lincoln can match up to De La Salle, probably may have, even have better talent. But I just think De La Salle's on one of those roles. And, and right now they're going to, you know, they might not go out and beat a St. John Bosco, but I think they can beat just about anybody else. And Lincoln is one of those teams. So I'll go with the Spartans. Joseph? Yeah, I can't pick against the Spartans. I learned my lesson from the, the Clayton Valley game. I'll pick the Spartans until until next year. So, yeah, oh. Dale Sal, Dale Sal's going to win. I don't, even, I don't even know what the score is going to be, but they're going to win. I'm taking the Spartans too, so uh, clean sweep on our end. Uh, Cal Preps is taking Lincoln, 28-21. Uh, last game on the list, Sarah Padres, 13-0. They will close out the California high school football season at 8 p.m. on Saturday night uh, against uh, St. John Bosco. I almost slipped. I almost said modern day. St. John Bosco. The uh, Braves are 12 and 1 with their only loss was uh, to modern day uh, earlier in the season. And then they came back and, and beat the Monarchs 24 to 22 at the Rose Bowl to advance to this game. Uh, as we mentioned, 34 players on the roster <laughs> with scholarship offers. Uh, almost unheard of in high school football, except if you're looking down the road at modern day. Um, Sarah, as I asked Patrick Walsh when this game was announced, how many guys do the Padres have? And he said, two. <laughs> One is a lineman who's going to San Diego State who is out for the season. And the other one is the tight end going to Harvard. So, but Patrick Walsh is a master motivator. Uh, the true definition of a, a, a fighter, an underdog guy who, you know, his team, no matter what happens, is going to play hard for all four quarters. Uh, that being said, uh, I'm still leading this competition. And last year I took, Sarah, just based on principle, because I was not going to take modern day this year. <laughs> I'm taking St. John Bosco. I'm not, uh, yeah, I'm taking the Braves to complete the, they're the number one team in the country. They're going to, they're going to finish 13 and one. Mike Lefkow, you're next. Well, I, at first I wrote down Sarah. I just kind of, because like I said earlier, I'd like to see Sarah win this game. But then I, I started thinking about it. I'm mean, St. John Bosco in modern day. They're like IMG is in Florida. They're, yeah. they're, they play a, a level of football that is far above what most high schools can even dream of playing. I'm not sure being, being an old man, I'm, I'm not sure I exactly like this system, but St. John Bosco is essentially a college team and, and uh, Sarah is very, very good. And I, I don't know, you know, when he said they only have two seniors that are being recruited, I mean, do they have – they probably have some software. They have more. I mean, they have more at the lower level – at the junior right. class. But, I mean, I mean the Maui thing, Smith has a scholarship offers. He's the quarterback. I mean, they, yeah, I mean – And Joseph Bay and Jabari Man, they've got – They've got yeah. talent. Right. They I just mean, don't but, have 44 scholarship offers. Yeah. Right. And, I mean, like I say, St. John Bosco is essentially IMG and – I, you have to go with them. But I do not think it's going to be a running clock. I do not think it will get to the point of being a running clock. I think Sarah will give them a little more than than people expect. Um, and uh, I, obviously Stephen Lowe, Walt, uh, Patrick Walsh's former offensive coordinator who left after their win in the 2017 state championship game, uh, is now um, – the offensive coordinator at Bosco has been the offensive coordinator there for five years. Uh, really good guy. Uh, he was, uh, I, he loved Sarah and, uh, obviously it's very expensive to live in San Mateo on a teacher's salary. So he, uh, uh, got the job offer down at uh, Bosco and he's done a great job down there. Um, and, uh, Patrick Walsh, uh, is, remains very close with him and Jason Negro, who, uh, Patrick had on the, the Sarah podcast yesterday, which was a very interesting listen. You uh, want to check it out, go to, you know, look up Padre football or Sarah football on Twitter. And they've got the link there. Um, Jason Negro was pretty funny on that. He was like, uh, you know, cause Walsh had jokingly said that, uh, 
that you stole my offensive coordinator after we won the state championship. And Negro's response was basically joking. Well, it looks like I did you a favor because you guys won like what two A then, and you know the last two years you've been in the open division. So yeah. So with the new offensive coordinator. So uh, anyhow, um, Joseph, have we gotten to your we gotten your no. pick? No, so, we have not. I You're don't believe team. that because of how we've picked and just we don't have enough games. I don't think there's any way for me to catch. Is it Lefty? Are you in? Are you in the lead, or Darren? Are you in the lead? I know I'm both. Lead are. Four, I lead by four games over Lefty, and you're four games behind Lefty, so you cannot catch me. You're eight I have back been. Seven I have four. been a uh, and and a uh, NFL language mathematically eliminated from contention. So I'm gonna go with Sarah. I'm. I can if they pull off the upset of all upsets, then it, I can at least say in my first season I I called it. Would this? I I would love to see the four too. It'll. I think if they win, it'll be uh, thirty-five, thirty-one. Woo! I would love to see the. Um, we got to check out to see what the Cal Prep score was when Palo Alto beat Centennial Corona in twenty ten. I think it was twenty ten. The one uh, where they call it, you know, one of the greatest upsets in California high school football history. Yeah. Um, because that's what this would be, right, Mike Lefkow, if Sarah pulls it off? Oh, yeah. If, if Sarah pulls this off, this will be regarded as a huge upset. Maybe the maybe the biggest upset in California history or, you know, right there with the Palo Alto win. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I say, and I've said it a million times, I mean, St. John Bosco and, and Modern Day are basically IMG. They're, you know, they're playing a, a level of football that no one else in the state plays. I will say this. I was uh, I covered one of the greatest upsets in college football history when uh, 41 point underdog Stanford beat USC at the Coliseum. So I have seen major, major upsets before. And you'll see another um, one on Saturday. Call it here first. There you go. We'll see. But uh Guys, have anything else to add before we wrap it up? Let's hope that this recording went through because I did pause there in the middle. My uh, my Wi-Fi froze, so let's hope we don't have to do a repeat show. Um, any uh, anything else to add? Just looking forward to covering some uh, some championship games. Look they for our coverage. Good. MercuryNews.com, EastBayTimes.com. <laughs> Mike Lefkow, uh, enjoy your vacation next week. Uh, Hopefully you have a good time. Anything else to add? Nope. Uh, I'm just looking forward to seeing how some of these games come out. Uh, hopefully the Bay Area will represent itself well in uh, in L.A. There, well, not L.A. technically. Orange County. Orange County. The southern end of Orange County, too. Home Mission, of the Angels. In the, uh, Mission Viejo. So, Joseph, we are not calling this L.A. They are not playing in L.A. The, uh, okay. the Rams, the, the, the SoFi, the stadium down there, is that in Orange County or is that in No, LA? it's in L.A. It's, it in, LA. Uh, it's in Inglewood. It's near oh, the airport. Oh, yeah, no, I know where Inglewood is. Yep. Right next to the Forum, where yep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, show my age here. I, w I used to go to games in the 80s at the Forum to see Magic Showtime Lakers. A long time right. ago. That was a long time ago. Uh, guys, it's been fun been a great uh great season uh really enjoyed doing this so hopefully you guys did too i did <laughs>